again, everyone. It's Art Gelwix. And this is a follow-up, sort of, to my last video about workflowing. It was really popular and got a lot of good traffic uh, and a lot of interest and comments. So I figured it made sense to carry forward along with the workflowy application. This time I'm going to do something a little different though. This time I'm going to show you how to set up in workflowy. What I'm calling is a remix of Merlin Mann's 43 folders. And if you use your search engine of choice and look up 43 folders, you'll find that it's a technique that can be used not only in the digital space, but also in the physical space to allow you to manage information over the course of an entire year, days and months. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set this up the way I would approach it in 43 fold, or I'm sorry, in Workflowy. Um, we're also going to take a look at how you can use some of the features of Workflowy to provide some extra capability that you would not normally have just using plain vanilla 43 folders. But to start, we need to pop over to Workflowy. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now let's explain a little bit about what 43 folders actually is. If we take a look at the concept, it's really a breakdown of 31 days and 12 months. Now I know not every month has 31 days, but this is at its worst case, this is the entries that you would have. An entry for each of the 31 days, possible days in a month, and an entry for each of the 12 months in the year. Now, seems pretty straightforward. So let's back up a little bit here, and I'm going to go into a page that I've used to create this. And I'm going to start to create some section headers here. I'm going to refer to them as section headers. They're still normal nodes. But ultimately, you'll see when I turn on a feature, it's going to change how they work. So we're going to start with something I'll explain later. Quick links. Now I'm also going to add the days. And this is the easy part. Aside from spelling. Under days, I'm literally going to create one node for each day. So if we go through, I'm just going to do this type of a thing. And I know there's plugins and there's applications that will allow you to jump through this process very quickly. Um, I don't actually have those installed, so I'm going to manually do Okay, so as you see here, I now have day entries for all of these individual ones. Not a big deal, pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to add another node and we're going to call it month. And no points for guessing what I'm going to put under here. So I'm just going to pause it for a second and then you'll see them all pop up. And ta-da, there's our months. Now you'll notice I didn't use the date property or the date tag within Workflowing. I'm reserving that for the actual notes that go in the sections. And the reason is because I like to be able to leverage the lookups that I can do tied to those date tags or the, the filters I can do for that. So I don't really need them at the month level. So let's start with this. How, how does this get useful? Well, I could use this right the way it is, but immediately I'm going to make a change. I'm going to switch this over to a board view and you'll notice right away, ah, this starts to make a little more sense. I now have for each day of the month, I've got an entry that I can plug in stuff for the day. So let's see, today happens to be the seventh of the month. So I can go down here, open it up and take a note, create video about workflowy. And I actually, I'm going to change that a little bit. I'm going to make that a tag because I want to be able to reference that tag later on. Um, and we'll do another one, 43 folders. If I could type today, that'd be good. And I'm going to add my date because I did it today. Uh, if this was a to-do item, publish the video tomorrow and we'll make it a to-do item. Now you'll notice, wait, it's 
publish it tomorrow on today. Well, we'll deal with that. I'll, I'll get to that later. But this is a thing that's happening right now. And this is part of the premise of the 43 folders approach is to capture everything on the day it's happening. You deal with moving around later on. But right now, as part of this remix approach, just capture it in that day so it doesn't get lost. All right. So now if we back up a level, we'll see that we've got a little indicator here. It's a little hard to see, but this light side is highlighted. So it means there's some notes here on the seventh. And if I expand it, there are my nodes that have been added in here. So I can continue doing this day after day after day after day. At the end of the day, when I go through my notes and I say, oh, okay, I need to process these. Well, this particular one published the video on Tuesday. That shouldn't be on the 7th. It should be on the 8th. Now, there's two ways you can do this. And I'm not going to recommend one over the other. It is really, really a matter of personal preference. However, what I do in these particular cases is I will take this item, I'll open it up, and I'll create a mirror. I'll use the mirror capability. And now, when I go back to the days, make sure I'm still in board mode. Oh, no, didn't want to do that. There we go. Make sure I'm in the correct view here. I'm going to go to the eighth, and I'm going to add in my mirror. Now, why would I do that? Well, Let's get that out of there. Because by mirroring it at this point, if I mark this as complete, you'll notice it marks it complete on the 7th, but it maintains the record on the 7th. So I know when I initially captured it versus when it gets done. And to make this really useful, what I should do is this. Indicate that this is the date that this particular task is due. See, if I do it this way, now I know that I captured it on the 7th and it happens to be due on the 8th. And this will come into play later on when we start adding some of these quick links in. So we'll get to that. But this makes it easy to process these types of things. So if I have something that has to happen on the 9th, well, I can pop in here and add in an entry on the 9th. And we'll say... Review video metrics. And we'll add a YouTube tag and we'll say this is due on August 12th, just for the sake of doing it. Now, if I go back here, I can see that I have this due on August 12th. And if I want to, which I probably should, I can mirror this, or I can use the regular mirror command, which is another way to do this. If I open this up, click in here, put in two parentheses, and say, review video. As I start to type, it's going to start to quick look up those things. And here's the review for the video metrics. It was on the 9th. This is coming from the 12th. So a quick click, and that has been mirrored over. And I can always tell it's mirrored because of the of the little diamond instead of the normal bullet. So now I'm starting to accumulate these items. Now this works out pretty well. It's a nice approach to being able to capture on a daily basis. If there's something that happens a month in advance, let's say for example, something that's going on in October. Well, I can't really put it on a given day because it, these are the days of the current month. So I put it in as an entry in the month record for that particular month. And let's say, for example, Oktoberfest. And we'll say October 1st. And now I've got an entry in October for Oktoberfest. When the month comes, when I'm at the end of September, what I would do is I would open my October record and start pulling all the October entries out and moving them to the correct day. Now, I could mirror them as well. Either way, doesn't really matter. The biggest important piece of this is that I'm able to go through and capture the things right away and then process them later on. 
So this is making it easy to go through this series of steps. Now's when we take it to the next level. As I go through and say, okay, I need to know in any given week, what are the things that I have to do? I can use the search capability of Workflowy to make basically a floating search. And here's how it would work. In the search, because I'm looking at all my 43 folders, I'm going to say that if an item is a to-do and it has a date entry in it for this week, I want you to return those. And you can see I've got this result set. I have one entry. It's on the 7th. It's due the 8th because I did that as the due approach for the dates. Here's where this trick comes in handy. I'm going to grab this URL, copy it to my keyboard. I'm going to go down here to quick links. And I'm going to create an entry here called things to do this week. I'm going to highlight it. Control K, Control V, apply. Now what I've done is I've given myself an easy way to single click and see everything that has to be done this week. Why is this useful? Because this week will become a rolling week. It doesn't actually have to be the current week that I'm in. Next week, it will be showing me the stuff for next week and so on and so forth. So we could reproduce this process. We can go in here and say, if it's a to-do item, using the is parameter, to-do, and for the date, say next week, there's my filter. I'm going to copy that. Now, in this case, there isn't anything there, so I didn't get any results back, but that's okay. We're, we're going to test that in a minute. Things to do next week. Highlight using Control A, Control K, Control V, apply. Things to do next week. Now, I don't see anything for next week, so let's test it out. Let's make a to-do item out of this review video metrics. Uh, to-do on Windows is Control-Alt-9 for a keyboard shortcut. And if this works and it falls into next week, oh, I guess it isn't for next week. Is that this week or next week? That would be next week. Let's try setting something to do on the 15th. Um, Let's say check YouTube comments. Do August 15, same day, but that's okay. That just means that I can track it easily. And now things to do next week. Sure enough, there's the thing that's coming next week. And when it gets closer, when it crosses into this week, it'll show up in the this week section. I can expand the column at any time and I can change my focus. This is a great way to manage those task activities while also managing all those bulk collections of notes that you need to keep track of as well. So if you want me to dig into this more, uh, do me a favor and leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe because this is an easy way for me to go through and really try to help you out with other ways to apply Workflowy within your environment. And I find that this method, specifically this 43 folders reflect or remix, is one of the great ways to get this in your hands and get the ball rolling. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, I look forward to seeing you as part of the next video.